Slender Man. Slender Man. Slender Man. Oh wait, that's a different horror film. One that's actually good. Slender Man. Why does this film exist? Does anyone remember Slender Man? The creepypasta, and not even a very good creepypasta, let's be honest, that bounded around the internet for a few years, then inspired a game which helped make some man-children YouTube famous, and made a lot of innocent youths shit their pants. There was another game, which was alright, and then everyone forgot about Slender Man for a few years, except when it inspired a couple of mentally unstable individuals to become murderers. So why was this film made now, in 2018? and not five years ago when people might have actually cared. I can only assume it's symptomatic of the mainstream film industry's increasing lack of creativity and originality, and it should surprise absolutely no one that the end product is a 90 minute piece of shit. There's already a whole host of reviews tearing this film apart, but here in the land of Harry Potter and bad teeth, it's only just been released, so here I am. Because there was no way I was going to let this one slip by me. The cinema I went to had no promotional material for this film. None and it was showing on a single screen, which happened to be the smallest one, like they knew they'd have to cut their losses. At the first screening on a Friday night, there were maybe two dozen people, the vast majority of whom were teenagers who seemed to be watching it ironically. So I went into this with absolutely no expectations, and I was still disappointed, because everything about this film screams, we didn't give a fuck. Pretty much every stereotypical visual, auditory, and narrative device that you'd associate with the horror genre is lazily mashed together into this pile of messy pulp. The music and sound effects are stock standard and completely forgettable. The cinematography and editing is exactly what you'd expect, except where shots that were meant to be shocking or scary go on far too long and therefore lose their effect. There was one jump scare where the character didn't react and the shot didn't change for about two seconds after the obnoxiously loud sound cue had finished. Speaking of which, as you can imagine, Imagine from a horror movie of this calibre, there's an excessive over-reliance on jump scares, but they're so obviously telegraphed and predictable that as far as I could tell, the audience didn't react to any of them during the entire film. There was one time where some of them gasped at a particularly disgusting scene, but that was more like an ugh. It doesn't help that the special effects are really not great. Slenderman himself doesn't look scary at all. And there were some visuals that were meant to be scary, but looked so ridiculous that I almost laughed. Almost. And I hope you like the woods, because my god you will be seeing a lot of them. Yes, it's Slenderman. He lives in the woods. But why would the writers strain their brain cells by using their imagination and doing something different, when they could pick an easy location where you can shoot half the movie in one evening? Oh, and the acting ranges from mediocre to bad. Not even funny bad. Just bad. But does the storytelling make up for any of these flaws? No, of course it doesn't. The story centres around a group of teenagers, the sure mark of quality for this genre, and the film desperately wants you to know that they are in fact teenagers. Within the first few minutes, we've seen them watching a YouTube video of a cute cat and discussing a Twitter poll. Gotta relate to that target audience, you know? Anyway, because they're morons, the girls summon Slenderman, with predictable results. Very predictable. Because the whole film is predictable. Almost nothing about it surprised me, except when I got my hopes up and expected them to do something unexpected. Sometimes the story only progresses because the characters act like morons. The girls summon Slenderman by watching a video, a lazy plot device in and of itself. One of the girls actually states, This could be a virus, guys! But they click on the link anyway. They are told that they have to keep their blindfolds on when trying to attract Slenderman, but one of them removes theirs anyway. One guy promises not to watch the video, but he does it anyway. And we never find out what happens to him, by the way. They just drop that subplot. The bad writing is also evident in the film's refusal to explain itself. When one of the girls goes missing, her friends sneak into her house and steal her laptop. We later see that it's locked with a password. How did her friends know her password? We'll never know. But the plot only moves forward because they see who she was talking to on the laptop. This potentially huge plot hole is just swept under the rug when it could have been addressed in less than 10 seconds. This also extends to Slenderman himself. Sometimes he takes his victims straight away, other times he releases them only to then later abduct them or drive them mad. It's never explained why he does this, and the film itself gives us the whole, we don't know why he does this, 
bullshit, which is just a lazy cop-out. I can't think of any good reason why Slenderman would act this way except to pad out the running time by adding extra scenes, because that's exactly what it feels like. Never that strong to begin with, the plot falls apart somewhere near the end of the second act and then just seems to plod along until the end. Partly as a result of this lack of direction, as well as the overlong sequences and shots, the whole film feels dragged out. Not slow and suspenseful like Alien, just sluggish and overly long. And since this is only 90 minutes, that's quite an achievement, but it shows how shallow and lacklustre this narrative really is. The ending is abrupt and unsatisfying, and leaves more questions than answers. We find out almost nothing about Slenderman that we didn't know at the start. It tries to connect it to other legends like the Pied Piper, but it goes nowhere. It does nothing to expand on the mythos and completely wastes a good opportunity to explore this character further, maybe by offering an unexpected revelation or resolution. But that's what this entire film is, an absolute waste of opportunity that the creators had no intention of taking advantage of, instead deciding to exploit a practically dead IP in the way that required the least amount of effort in order to make a quick buck. I would have much preferred to see a film that explored the real life spread of the Slenderman phenomenon and the effect that it's had on certain individuals, something that the film actually alludes to at the very end, and a subject that's far more interesting than any lame exploitation of a creepypasta and would have made for a much better viewing experience. But the creators pussied out of going that far, and although I can't necessarily blame them for not wanting to directly allude to recent real life tragedies, I can blame them for removing some of the more graphic scenes, like one where a character stabs herself in the eye, from the final cut for the sake of getting a PG-13 rating in the US. If these scenes had been included, maybe the film would have had more weight and actually been shocking or scary at times, but this toning down of the violence in order to appeal to a wider demographic and scrape in some more cash has left left this a bland, boring, and utterly unscary horror film. Even the teenagers, who were clearly this film's intended audience, were badmouthing it all the way out of the cinema. Before the film, there was a 30 second advert that warned people against trespassing on railway lines, and that was scarier and got a much bigger reaction from the audience than the film itself. It would have been more enjoyable to watch the characters just sit down and play the game for an hour and a half. It's a fucking travesty that some talented screenwriters, directors and actors will never get the opportunity to see their visions fulfilled, while irredeemable garbage like this somehow gets projectile vomited onto our screens. Slenderman gets a 1 out of 10 on the cynical scale. Don't watch this movie, not even ironically, just don't waste your time and money like I did. Just don't be me, basically, that's what I'm trying to say. Thanks for watching. Let me know your thoughts about Slenderman and this review in the comments down below. If you liked it, feel free to check out some of my other videos and stay tuned for future reviews. Next up is The Happy Time Murders, and I've also got reviews of We Happy Few and Agony in the works. So until then, guys, remember to stay cynical. Mm -hmm.